hey guys welcome back to the view cryptos channel today the total crypto market cap is one trillion six hundred and twenty one billion dollars and at the highest point it was uh, two trillion five hundred and fifty five billion dollars which was actually this year the crypto market is down but uh, I'm not worried. Why am I not worried? Well, because uh, the crypto market currently is measured in US dollars mainly. So what that means? Well, uh, let me show you this tweet that I tweeted yesterday, I think. The value of crypto is measured in USD and Euro and this is not adequate because the fiat currencies are becoming more and more worthless with every single day. The prices of cryptos today are just an illusion. And uh, I totally believe that. So I just uh, wanted actually to show you this. So uh, again, Biden's uh, 6 trillion budget proposal calls for surge in domestic spending, higher taxes. So, uh, more US dollars in circulation, they're going to print uh, more US dollars and also, let's not forget the pandemic emergency purchase program uh, created by the European Central Bank. Uh, if you forgot uh, about this, so let me remind you, the PEP is a temporary asset purchase program of private and public sector securities. The governing council decided to increase the initial 750 billion euros envelope for the PEP by 600 uh, billion euros on 4th of June 2020 and by 500 billion euros on 10th of December for a new total of uh, 1 trillion and 8 150 billion euros all asset categories eligible under the existing asset purchase program are also eligible under the PEP uh, as well as a waiver of the eligibility requirements has been gra granted for securities issued by the Greek government so as uh, the US government is printing more US dollars the European Central Bank is also printing more uh, euros so let's take a look at the US debt clock so you see currently the US national debt uh, over 28 trillion dollars here you see the public debt to GDP ratio over 100% and uh, also let's take a look at uh, a European debt clock so here you can see the uh, Germany debt to GDP ratio 71% Greece you see debt to GDP ratio uh, 176% France uh, 96% and so on and so on I Italy over 130%, Spain uh, over 100%, and here you can see the total uh, European debt, and it is almost 11 trillion euros. And I also want to show you uh, a few few articles from the World Economic Forum about cybersecurity so this is uh, one of them cybersecurity training can close skills gap for a safer digital world uh, the US pipeline attack shows the energy sector must act now on cybersecurity and uh, governments must act on cybersecurity the new US executive order is a start and actually the World Economic Forum is going to do something like a simulation or on uh, cyber attacks. Uh, let's actually take a look at this uh, 
article here from uh, WEF, Cyber Polygon. This project is part of the World Economic Forum's uh, Center of Cybersecurity. Digitalization is accelerating everywhere. New digital ecosystems are forming all around us, creating unnoticed uh, linkages across services and supply chains. As the world grows more interconnected, the speed of development makes it difficult to assess the impact of change. A secure approach to digital development today will determine the shape of our future for decades to come. Having the right skills in place is key to protecting organizations from attack now. What is Cyber Polygon? So, Cyber Polygon is a unique cybersecurity event that combines the world's largest technical training exercise for corporate teams and an online conference, conference uh, featuring senior officials from international organizations and leading corporations. The 2021 conference discusses the key risks of digitalization and best practice for the secure development of digital ecosystems. The 2021 technical exercise builds and tests the skills needed to protect our industries um, centering on a targeted supply chain attack. Every year, the training brings together a global businesses and government agencies to collaborate and on technical exercises. The live stream draws in millions of uh, spectators from across the world. 2020 results, uh, 120 teams from uh, 29 countries took part in the technical cybersecurity training in 2020. The live streaming viewership uh, reached 5 million from 57 nations. Uh, okay, Cyber Polygon. Uh, in 2021, this year, discussions during the live streamed conference will center on secure development of ecosystems with global digitalization further accelerating and people, companies and countries becoming ever more, uh, even more, uh, ever more interconnected. Security of every single element of a supply chain is to ensuring the sustainability of the whole system. During the technical exercise, participants will hone their practical skills in mitigating a targeted supply chain attack on a corporate ecosystem in real time. The event will be held online on July, uh, on July 9th. So, this is about the Cyber Polygon. And actually, let's take a look uh, at one video from the World Economic Forum about cyber attacks from this year and cyber pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic has shaken our economies and societies to the core and shown us how vulnerable we are to biological threats. In the digital world, similar risks are being overlooked right now. A cyber attack with COVID-like characteristics would spread faster and further than any biological virus. Its reproductive rate would be around 10 times greater than what we've experienced with the coronavirus. To give you an idea, one of the fastest worms in history, the 2003 slammer Sapphire Worm, doubled in size approximately every 8.5 seconds, infecting over 75,000 devices in 10 minutes and almost 11 million devices in 24 hours. Fortunately, at least until now, cyber attacks have not impacted our health the way pandemics have, but the economic damages, and therefore the impact they have had on our daily lives, have been equal and sometimes even greater. You see, the only way to stop the exponential propagation of a COVID-like cyber threat is to fully disconnect the millions of vulnerable devices from one another and from the internet. All of this in a matter of days. A single day without the internet would cost our economies more than 50 billion US dollars. And that's before considering the economic and societal damages should these devices be linked to essential services, such as transport or healthcare. As the digital realm increasingly merges with our physical world, the ripple effects of cyber attacks on our safety just keep on expanding at a faster pace than what we're preparing for. COVID-19 was known as an anticipated risk. So is the digital equivalent. Let's be better prepared for that one. The time is now. When you have massive inflation and health crisis worldwide, combined with a cyber pandemic that is damaging the world economic system, well, then there is the need for a great reset and there is uh, the need 
to replace the current uh, legacy financial system and of course what are they going to to use in order to do this of course the safest uh, option is to use blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies and now let's actually finish this video by taking a look at a few videos that are about uh, inflation cryptocurrencies a macro view on the cryptocurrency market cyber attacks and the world economic forum we keep jumping what i call helicopter money out of out of helicopter windows and uh, Joe Biden just a week or two ago announced we're going to give $3,000 per child for every family, just free money. Well, that sounds great. Americans love free money, <laughs> but, you know, there is no such thing as free money, you know. So if you're going to continue to just shower the economy with cheap money, then you're going to lower the value of every dollar out there. I mean, this is just math, right? And then that will mean that every dollar out there is worth less. And that means people's, you know, wages and salaries and income their purchasing power is reduced. And so it's a, you know, one thing to remember about inflation is that inflation is a, is a regressive tax on the lowest income people. So, you know, a millionaire or billionaire doesn't really feel the effect of inflation. Somebody working on a 30 or $40,000 annual income, they really feel the impact of that higher, those higher prices on their real income. Switching gears here. Good thing, uh, because it's not just the United States that's borrowing huge amounts of money. Almost virtually every country in the world is. And that means they're devaluing their currencies. And that's why, you know, you've seen in recent, recent months, you know, a nice spike up in the price of, uh, of uh, some of these cryptos. Obviously, Bitcoin's had a really tough month or so. Uh, so um, I like the idea of having these alternatives. And I'm not sure having a digital dollar-based currency like the Fed is talking about is going to necessarily mean that people stop buying other cryptos because for both financial privacy reasons and also because they don't depend don't trust central bankers you know this circles right into our conversation about inflation you know if you think a current look inflation is just deva a devaluation of a currency and the way you protect yourself is to get out of that currency and there are a lot of different ways you can do that you can buy gold you can buy silver you can buy other, you know, real estate assets, but one way of doing it is buying an alternative currency like crypto. So I don't think cryptos are going away. Uh, there's now a lot of competition in that market as well. And I think that's a great thing. See, the WEF seems so good at preparing for the future. It's wise to look at what they're doing now because that might be coming down the pipe. Actually, the recent pipeline extortion in the USA is a good case in point. See, that was a relatively mild case of cyber terrorism. And coincidentally, of course, the WEF are conducting a new simulation, this time over a cyber attack that will shut down the world economy. Imagine how quickly society would disintegrate if water and electricity and fuel and other essentials were shut down due to a cyber attack. I mean, hoarding toilet paper wouldn't be enough anymore, would it? would have to have a new collective enemy to unite against, while, of course, demanding that government save us all. Once again, the WF is making the case that this is a global threat, which of course it is, and is a, quote, major obstacle in our path to progress. You see, there's that word again, progress, as in progressive, as in socialist. <laughs> Naturally, such a threat requires a global response, which the WF is prepared to lead. It seems, you see, that every problem identified by this mob and their allies in the international bureaucracy requires the global centralization of power and decision-making. And this latest simulation neatly fits in with their Great Reset agenda. Now, only time will tell if their concerns over a cyber attack that shuts the world will po prove as prescient as their pandemic simulation. If it does, I suspect it would open up a raft of questions as to just how contrived these weapons of mass hysteria may actually be. Because the macro moved against them. And for a long time, our industry has been this way. Uh, you know, 2017, 2018, and before, if Bitcoin goes up, everybody goes up. If Bitcoin goes down, everybody goes down. And it's depressing as hell. It doesn't matter what technology you have, what you've accomplished, the deals you've done, the announcements, whatever it might be, there can be some counter-cyclic play 
But for the most part, uh, these markets are driven in that direction. And 2020, 2021 have been very interesting in that this is really the first time where we've noticed significant counter-cyclic movement where both Bitcoin dominance has fallen tremendously. It's gone down to 43% the last time I checked. And that's basically the percentage of all the totality of market cap that Bitcoin owns relative to everything else. And we've also seen that institutional preferences have not been unilaterally Bitcoin. And then everything else, actually, people are starting to differentiate uh, proof of stake from proof of work. And we're starting to see separation of things. And in that, it actually is a pretty amazing thing. Uh, you know, we're going to get it done as an industry. Algorand, F2, Cardano with the World Boris Omega, you know, we're all neck and neck for building these amazing engines that are going to process billions of transactions every year, if not more, uh, containing collectively trillions of dollars of value. We're future-proofing programmable finance. And this financial operating system is going to be social, and it's going to be institutional, and it's going to be Fortune 500, and it's going to run nation states at some point. It's inevitable. This is the reality, because where are we coming from? We're coming from a siloed world. We're coming from a controlled top-down world. We're coming from a fragmented world. We're coming from a world that's incredibly exclusive, where certain people, a small group of people, get to decide everything, and nothing is working. Negative interest rates. You borrow 10 and you get nine back. It's, it's nuts. Uh, hyperinflation, massive deficit spending, uh, banks that are completely unaccountable, financial systems that are super fragile and too big to fail, uh, tons of corruption, tens, tons of nepotism, uh, double speak everywhere you look. And policymakers who have the audacity to say that a full reserve bank is less stable than a fractional reserve bank. It's, it's, like, it's like somebody telling you cancer is good for you. Uh, it's just craziness. So there's an inevitability to our industry as a whole, and there's a maturing of our industry as a whole. And on the peripheries, we have a mass influx of people who some came to get rich quick, some came out of frustration and anger, some came because they honestly believe this is the next big thing. This is it, guys. The industry is moving in this direction. Who the hell cares about volatility? It goes up, it goes down, but it's here to stay. Crypto's not going anywhere. These markets aren't going anywhere. This experiment hasn't failed. It's a contagion that has infected the world. And it will ultimately change the DNA of the world as a result, leaving behind something fundamentally different than when we found it. We now live in a place where instantaneously value can move anywhere, be stored anywhere, transformed into any other type of value. We've discovered the financial stem cell. We've learned how to engineer it and change it and transform it, replicate it, grow it in a lab and make it useful anywhere, any place, any time. And we've discovered that everything is programmable and everything can be integrated together. The legal arrangements, the identity arrangements, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's all there. Once mankind knows they have fire, you can't go back. You can't change that. You can't put that genie back in the bottle. 